Hello everybody, Jerome right here and once again you're joining me on my YouTube Jeronification channel. I wonder if this will, I wonder if I'm being, I'm going to be using this here along with my pencil because I want to see if my pointer here with my mouse, I actually highlight an accent when I'm trying to um, describe here. It's showing up on my screen but this is the first time and I don't know if it'll pop up in my video as well. Okay, now this is a fourth century a fourth century people catacomb image of Jesus um, I have other I have 200 plus other videos here so I do have a fourth century another fourth century catacomb image of Jesus up that I actually decoded some images within that and I'm gonna bring this one back and, and show you some things about this and then I'm compared to some modern day things that are around us in association with modern day things that are around us and also you can compare it to the other catacomb image that I actually had done and um, and show and I can show you the consistency and how these um, these multi-dimensional images appear not just in fourth century catacomb images but they appear and pop up in later um, Renaissance artists like Michelangelo da Vinci Bernini um, the sculptures these people um, Verrocchio these people took and from based on their knowledge of this stuff created their artworks and that's why I can consistently find these multi-dimensional encrypted messages and images within their artworks okay it's a hidden message to show that how mankind evolved from their primitive stages of that of ape and Africans to the likenesses of Jesus through altered and manipulated bloodlines which was how uh, was always been controlled and this is the stuff this the big secret of everything people um, 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 um states Illuminati this that and the third and all of that I don't want to go there with that I mean y'all been burnt out on that there you know what I mean that that's been that's played out with me um uh, hidden secrets the holy grail now, now I would like to think of this as being the genetic holy grail to everything and because this people is tied in and linked to everything and if you think about it what meant more to our ancestors that were before us than who they genetically were and I like in describing that what I like to say is look at our kingships and our queenships and our ancient royalty people that demand to be worshipped by the way think about that for a minute people people that the um, that demand to be worshipped that you bow before them or you get this or you get that or you will get punished if you don't think about that then we take and um and and look at the way that they preserve bloodlines through their supposed to be um, a celibacy in religion which is a way of controlling um, bloodlines and segregation of bloodlines okay and then in royalty where they have their protected bloodlines their royal bloodlines See, this is this is this is this is something people that ties everything and meshes everything together. All right. Now, this catacomb image of Jesus. First of all, I want to point something out to you. Um, I'm looking at this backwards. There is a, some type of a writing here. I don't know if this is an A. I don't know if it's, this is Latin or Roman um, 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 writings here and text. I don't know what it is, but there's an A here and there's like a um, an M or a W here depending on the way you're looking at it over here on this side um, I haven't I haven't did no research on this but I just like to bring it up for the sake of the video that first of all I like to say that here in um, um well over here I'm gonna use my pencil too I'm not just use my marker I'm gonna try to I'm gonna use this as well too because if it shows up I'll use it for now and on but anyway there's a letter. Um, there's a letter here. It's either like an A or upside down V here. Okay, on this side is run off the paper, and then on that side is like either um, an M or a W, depending on the way that how you look at it, whether it's going to be read upside down or whatever. I don't know how you read those um, the, um that ancient text there. But it's my position that there's something going on here in this image of Jesus with the eyes, because right here specifically. This here appears to be some type of, of, of letter, text letter, coming up over top of his eyebrow, down across his nose, and right here, it seems that it creates a letter. Now, the reason why I'm almost certain that that's a letter is because 
it lines up perfectly with the other letters across the page. If you were to do this, it goes to the one over here by my nearest by my finger to the over over to the other one that's at the point, and there's some type of letter going on. But not just that; it seems to be some type of symbol here, where Jesus's eye almost creates like a black eye, and then the line over reminds me of that of the um of what the um with the Egyptian um the god there Ra or whatever that that um the eye, you know what I mean? That looks like it, it looks like a symbolization between the both of them. Of symbolizing something like that which would not be strange either people because you got to know that back during the time of Jesus I mean this is where they evolved from ancient Egypt and uh, and um and um and these and these um and, and these symbols and symbolizations were something that we probably carried over so I wouldn't be surprised if that's what that was I wanted to just highlight that for you because I thought that this stood out okay I thought that that stood out and I thought that this stood out, that, that this all looks strange in here. Um, to Google this image, by the way, because I always like for you to Google these images. Google this image, and it's the bust, it's the bust of Christ, and it's the um, Commodella Cemetery, 4th century. So if you Google the, um, the bust of Christ and the um, Commodella, Commodella Cemetery, that's C-O-M-M-M. O D I L L A cemetery. Okay, and this is a fourth century painting. So it's the bust of Christ. That's B U S T of Christ, um, and the Commodilla um, Cemetery. And it's a fourth century painting. And this will come up. Okay, now, um, now that I pointed out this here and his face was going on in the face there, I'm, I'm gonna be showing you some very interesting images about this. But first of all, when I sat there, when I'm drawn to an image, I sit there and I stare at it. All right, because I have this paranormal experience encounter thing going on inside me, people, that allows me to be drawn to this. And when I'm drawn to it, I lift, I separate, my eyes separate everything about this picture. I dissect it in a way that my mind looks at as if I was the artist that created it. Okay, and when I'm drawn into the image, I'm drawn into it in a way that you could never possibly imagine or experience. So when I try to describe it to you, I try to give it to you in a way to, to, to kind of sort of share my experience with you of what I am going through when it actually um, is occurring to me. All right. So when I looked at this image, I knew automatically that this is Christ's face is a representation of other faces peeling away or his face emerging from other bodies of faces this is what this is representing to me okay so when I looked at this in that way because I'm looking at Christ as emerging I know the creatures that we evolved from so it would be easy for me to understand uh, on that part of it, that portion of it okay now let me see if I can use the pointer too if you look at this section of his face over top of his beard right here it seems to be a wholly and entirely separate right here this part here of Christ's face seems to be a whole nother piece of face and you know what this brings me to and then with the way the eyes looking and all of that it looks like a mask and that brings me to what I'm about to say next Christ reminds me in this picture in that fourth century picture of this here that's the first thing that came to mind when I see that this is an image of the Phantom of the Opera. And you notice the face mask there, and then this bottom of the portion of the mouth is all out. People, that brought me right to there. So what in the world is going on? So now, I'm, 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 as this connection is coming to me, I'm looking and I said, wow, that's amazing there. And automatically, if I make that connection, and here's another image of the Phantom of the Opera here. And as you can see, his mask. And I'm looking at this. So now I made that connection. Once I make such a connection, people, I know that I'm not wrong in what I'm feeling and what I'm sensing because I'm instinctively drawn to this stuff. 
Look at the half face of Christ there, and then look at look at this here. Look at the Phantom of the Opera, the mask. All right. Now I'm going to show you something that's very unique about this. The Phantom of the Opera. It seems that his whole thing is based on the woman and all of that. Because now that I've seen this, I haven't had time this morning to do it. But now that I've made this connection, I will be able to later, or others will be able to actually take and take the screenplays and the screenwrites and actually take them and um, the screenplays and, and um, the, 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 not the screenplay, the playwrights and you will be able to pretty much now understand and identify with it because this Phantom of the Opera thing has been in play now for I think over 20 plus, 25 plus years so the screenplay or the, uh, or the playwright of this thing would actually probably in my mind be wrapped around everything that I have just dis discovered and the people in motion on the stage will represent something very unique and beyond a reality that you can possibly understand but now grasp the reality in it now that I can, will be able to show you but I'm not going to go into that now but I'm telling you now that the Phantom of the Opera, based on what I'm just seeing right here, will have an underlining meaning and an underlining message that goes far more deeper than what you possibly could imagine. All right. So how could I possibly say something like that? Well, the Phantom of the Opera, like this mask that I'm seeing here with Jesus, this thing here going on, I'm going to show you some other stuff too, by the way, people, is based on that with his love and all of this for a woman. You see, this almost like this fair maiden, and she got this nice clothes going on here with this. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not even gonna go into detail with all of this here, but anyway, she has this. He has this fair maiden that he's in love, like a love story, like a Julia Romeo type, type thing. Well, with Jesus, this catacomb image, he appears with women too, but people never see them unless they are shown them. The lady of his life is the mother of creation. And I'm going to show you, if I can show you right here. I'm going over her nose, around her chin. And she appears to be wearing like a headscarf right there. You see that? Now, I'm going to do it with my pencil just in the event that you don't see it with my pointer on there, my computer pointer. All right, here's her chin. This is her mouth. Here's her nose. Her would be left eye, would be um, right eye, forehead. And this stuff here kind of sort of creates like a veil, like a nun's veil over, over her head. See her entire face right there? Well, this witch-like woman, Y'all probably call her the Madonna. I call her the Medusa and the Mother of Creation. That's what I call her. I know how she evolved. And I know what the appearance of with her and Jesus together stands for. Now, this is a transparent image. You probably won't. Now, she hardly even see it or notice that it being there. But now, except for that, I showed you that. Now, I'm going to show you some other interesting things about this image. Because from her nose, these little orifices right here in her nose, these openings, if you turn this image upside down, it's like drooling coming out of her nose there. And there's another creature, or other creatures, that actually are shown, like a DNA, shown here. And it creates another face, which I'm going to see if I, well, I might try to show you that now since I, because there's other things there as well. But I'm going to tell you, okay, there's her, there's her face right there. See that? There's her eye, nose. Now I'm going to turn it upside down and see if I can get, get you that image. Right, where are we at? Right here, it creates another creature. Okay, and it has, guess what it has wrapped around its forehead? Like a viney thorn that you see later on in Jesus' images, where Jesus is wearing that thorn around his forehead. That's what that thing right here has around his head. Jesus doesn't have it around his head in the image, but this thing is wearing this. That thorny like vine around the head, around the forehead. So here's the entire head 
Here's the chin. Here's the mouth. Here's the nostril. And it looks like a reptilian people. Hold on. Let me move this out the way. And it looks like a reptilian people. And it has a thorn, thorny like vein around its forehead. Later that Jesus will be identified with wearing. So out of the nose of this witch-like woman's face, if you turn it upside down, there's this creature. Hold on, let me bring it in. There's this creature, and it's wearing the thorns around its head that Jesus would be later shown depicted wearing in later images by artists. This right here. Amazing, huh? All in a transparent image. Now, I'm going to get back to that because that's 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 a unique find there. So upside down, running from this woman's nose. Running from this woman's nose, coming down here, and it's not like trail. Creates another image. And then these thorns here, these thorns are, are weared around. It's like a crown. That being is crowned with them. Now it's amazing because Jesus didn't obtain his crown like that until actually he was hung on the cross or put uh, these things were put on him and it was it's supposed to be some type of punishment. But here there's an entire different message that I can read you and understand what this is representing. So this is stating a genetic, a gene. We you know what comes out of our nose, it's not formed. Genes, DNA, showing you a genetic bloodline. Or a genetic connection. But anyway, I'm going to keep going. You digest that for a minute. That Phantom of the Opera thing, going back to it. When you Google this image, look right here in the beard of Jesus. Now, there are many images there, people. You can go from the smallest resolutions to the largest resolutions. And I'll tell you that you will find so many pictures or so many images of faces here in this beard that your eyes will go crazy trying to sort through them all. Just as soon as you find one, another one appear. Now, this woman will appear to you here first in the beard. But for some of you, it depends on, it's, you know what, it depends on your genetic, genetic makeup and your eyes, your screen and all of that. But in there, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the face here so so most of you can actually see it. I have it kind of sort of marked out. Here, there is a green face. I'm at her chin. Okay, so when you get here is a woman. Right here would be her red lips, right in there. I'm just hot. Here is her cheekbone under her left eye. Over here would be that cheekbone underneath the right eye which is, is it seems like this I'm going to show you something else though here's the nose right there okay the nose line and the face is in here so this face can be realized almost four or five different ways it shows you the old woman's likeness and then it shows you a young woman's likeness and not saying that it's this woman I'm not saying, I mean, well, of course we know that, but there's a, uh, a woman that appears in green that can be realized as being a young maiden like she is. And she is in here, in the middle, right in there. That face morphs in multidimensional faces in about four or five different ways, just in the female likeness, one of which is like this. And then you will actually realize a younger woman that can be realized like this. And this is another unique comparison that I have just made between that image from a 4th century catacomb image and this image here. Um, being that of our, um, um, our 20th century. Now, there's more about this image. I'm going to show you some things, another image that can be realized. Now, if you look in here, people, 
you can take these images and separate them. You can see monkeys, you can see alien faces, you can see people. I inspire you to take the resolution of this. Go from its largest state and work your way up slowly to your minimal state. Well, go from your minimal state to your largest state. And as you go through that resolution change, it's taking you from one dimensional face to the next. Okay? So I want you to look in here and say, now down here, when you look at this, there's a demonic figure, which we all come to know as being the devil. The chin is here, the nose is here, and this long line here creates like his horn right there. Now, in this direction, there was another horn. We have another being, and this here also creates a horn that's up higher on another being. Now, this image from its largest state again to its smallest state has morphing multi-dimensional beings that are in here which show from a certain so well from a from a source of creatures and creations these images emerged through all of their states until finally this likeness emerged genetically this here people is a genetic grail up here where Jesus' hair comes into parts in the center. At the top, you will see two creatures. Here's one here, snaking off from this direction. You separate here, here's another coming from this direction, and it shows them merging together in the middle at the top of Jesus' head. Like a two-headed circle. What do those creatures look like? I'm going to give you an idea. When you Google that image, you should see something similar to that, where this side collides with that size and there's emergence of genes. It's showing you that this emergence of those genes is what calls for the likeness of this being. And his hair. Our DNA represents who we are genetically. So when you take your hair and put beings in your hair and they show a trail of these beings where they attach down on the other ends to creatures, people, what is that telling you? They are genetic identifiers showing you how one side of your body collided with alien genes, or well, not one side of your, genes of your body collided with other part of genes in your body and it created that likeness. And that's what this is about. This is a big secret about who Christ is. Now, what creatures are we discussing? Well, I know that we emerge from that of fish. Now, this is backwards. So, let me, oh yeah, here you go here. So, I know that we emerge from fish. And from fish, they show that we came the reptilian ape and so forth and so forth. Well, not just fish, but dinosaurs as well. So here, come over top of here with me. Come down, come around, come here, go there, and there's the eye. So what is that? Right there. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna leave my pointer. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with my pointer as well too because I'm gonna see if my pointer actually is show up in this video. Right there, come around, okay. And I'm gonna take it out now, and I'm not even gonna use it no more because it not may not even be able to do anything. But there's an eye. You know what that is, people? It's the head of a fish, a shark. You see it right there? See the eye? See the, separa the separation lines that create the color of the shark, where the shark is consistently uh, like that greenish or a bluish color up top, a grayish color up top. This is green, this thing, and then the bottom portion is white. You see that, people. And look how it, it matches perfectly with coming across the nose, where the eye is right there. You see that, people? 
This fish, representing the megalodon shark, the whale, those creatures are what, where we evolved from, where the original creatures that calls for our creation came from. On the other end of that creature, you will see reptilian looking apes in a morphing way. There are apes here, people. Um, let me see if I can point one out for you. And from its largest state in here, you will see an ape. But there are about five or six of them morphing here. And I'm going to show you what their ultimate likeness became in a minute. There are morphing apes here, people. If I were to draw them, it would mess up the overall picture. But you can see from their largest state to their smallest state, there's faces. And now that I've shown you this, you will see little multidimensional faces, green beans, eye, eye, mouth. You will see little green beans all through here that looks like aliens right through there, morphing off of this catacomb image of Jesus. I'm morphing through. Now, let's come over here because fish did not create man alone. Fish did not have, well, at that point, legs. But what's showing you how these fish got their legs and how they came onto land, and I actually have a wonderful um, Grand Canyon video that has where I found civilizations up atop the peaks of Grand Canyon, and it shows you our great white shark and how it got its legs. But anyway, here, if you go over here, you see like a triangular step here? You know what that is? That triangular step? You see that people? Right there? This represents the tail of a dinosaur. Through dinosaur and fish came the image of man. This is the reason why that closest being to this right here are reptilians. Those reptilians are depicted in multidimensional forms right here. And then it shows you how that multi those, those beings evolved. And then we come up here. And where is my ape at? Is this the eye? Yeah. If you come right here with me. Out of all of these images of the ape that appear here, here's the one that stands out the most. Right here. This is the ape's mouth. Bottom chin area. Here's the ape's open lip area in there. Coming around the ape's nose, the ape's eye would be aligning with Jesus' eye. And then there's something else that is unique that goes up or over and around Jesus' forehead. But you know what that is? People, that is a penis, a dick, attaching the head of the four, I mean, the, the head of the ape. Now, I'm going to see if I can bring that in closer for you. Where is that ape at? Well, I can't get it on this one because I have But anyway, let me see if I can bring this in closer for you with the... Let me show you. Am I on the right side? Yeah, yeah. There you go there. Here. The snout of the ape. The eye lining up with Jesus. This here represents the ape's dick. Penis. Showing you how. And here. How from this looking creature, the DNA was changed, and the way that they showed that the DNA was changed, they symbolize it with 
the presence of a dick, a penis. Now, I'm compelled to go back because you probably said, Jerome, you're going overboard. What is a dick doing on the face of Jesus? Well, that brings me to another amazing discovery of mine. compelling discovery of mine, where you have these guys. This is an image of Nervy Hall. Can I wonder if I can get that with that? This is, I'm going to turn that up for a minute to show you. This is Nervy Hall. Nervy Hall is the one that created the building. This sculpture is created by Fizzini. Okay, you have the Pope there, and you have his bishops or cardinals sitting off on either side. This is supposed to be Jesus emerging from a nuclear explosion. It's my position that when Fizzini created this sculpture, all he did was make a sculpture and exclude pieces of a puzzle, took them out, cut them out. And if you know how to read this, you should be able to mentally put the pieces back in and you see exactly what is there. But however, there are some things that are still there. If you notice that Jesus is here hanging from that nuclear mass, lo and behold, the witch-like woman, the mother of creation, is right here. There's her chin, there's her mouth, there's her nose, there's her eye. And she's on what? No other longer than a horn. This is a horn. This horn is on the head of another larger likeness of her that is actually there in the image. Now I'm going to bring it in closer so you can you can bear with me for a minute people. But I'm going to show you that this body that Jesus is in right here, this is a head of a serpent, a snake. This here is where his hair is blown, creates that a skeleton of a dinosaur creature which is linked to that of a lion. Um, and that idea, that concept of that was stolen from ancient Egypt because this identical scenario, I have connected it to that of ancient Egypt. This creature here creates a serpent, the head of a snake. The mouth, the nose, the bottom mouth is open, the eye is there, and this is the head of a snake. Then I'm going to start coming in closer to start showing you other likenesses. This is the same image. I just wanted to show you the Pope and all of them in there. I'm going to bring up the same image without my highlights. And then I'm going to bring my highlights. It's the head of a snake. You can almost even see the eye right there. There's the mouth. Okay. Those scaly features around the mouth there. And look at this, people. Because it gets, it gets better. I'm going to bring it in. I just want to give you a couple different versions of it. Now... Here's the king. You see that, people? Hold on. I'm losing focus here on what I'm trying to do. Because I was trying to show you the worm in the mouth of this thing. And I lost the snake's mouth. Hold on. Alright, here. In this snake's mouth, there's the snake's mouth. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the face of the snake. There's a worm coming out, and then there's a head with a man's face on the other end of the uh, the, uh, the other end of that worm, nose, eye, forehead, with another snake snaking off of his head. You see that? And this is in the snake's mouth. And now this portion goes over to here, which brings me to showing you what I'm gonna show you next. Or should I show you my snake first? I can. Well, I'm gonna. I'll show you my. Let me show you my reptilian ape first. Well, that. Well, let me show you my snake. Here's the snake, people. That is what is there. There's that object I just showed you in the snake's mouth. Oh, hold on. Let me turn my light back on. Back down. Let me be able to get some more light on this for you. And we get that. Oh, gosh. There you go. You see that, people? And see the object in the mouth? 
this is what it looks like highlighted out and you see the body of Jesus there now I didn't deviate from none of the lines all I did was just enhance the colorings I promise you that every line even the touch-ups that I made around the snake's mouth that creates the scaly appearance are already there all I did was just enhance the lines that's it you blew this image of Nervy Hall you pan in on it these markings are identical to what is there the teeth all I did was accent them with white that's it so what in the hell wouldn't you see that if you see this remind me of something off of, of predator or um, yeah predator the alien alien predator and the alien and the predator oh no not predator alien if you see a body a human body emerging from the head of the snake isn't it only logically and reasonably you can conclude that it's showing you from the body of this being came that being and that's what they're telling you but there's more people my thing is that I was supposed to be showing you the ape with the dick on his head. All right. Here at my snake, right here. Where we at? Where the fuck are we in the world? Oh, it's on this side. Here at the snake. I have to bring this down because this light is. I'm gonna try to bring this light down where I can get it behind the screen here. And I think that it's screwing me. Okay, that, that's much better. Yeah, that's much better. But I take it out. Alright, there you go. Alright. I'm screwing up here, people. I'm gonna just here. Okay, here. I can do this for the sake of this video. Let me get this going. The apes with the dick on his head is right here. That's the apes left nostril. That's the apes left eye socket. Right there. There's the right eye socket. There's the right nostril. This is the upper mouth portion of the ape. And if you look, this is the ape's mouth, and going through the ape's mouth is a linking genetic chain, which can be trailed off into other creatures that shows you a genetic link of this creature, and what is described here, and with Jesus. And lo and behold, now this entire face creates that of the skeletal like image of the ape as you can see I'm gonna bring it in closer and lo and behold on the ape's head these represents it creates his cranial cranial two penises or two dicks this is one with the head this is the other with the head and each one of these dicks or penises can be identified because on the ends of them if you know what to look for, there are sculpted faces or create creations of beings which can be read through and be identified through what is here. So, this and this and this little guy right here, these worms, are showing you genetic creations and this is what your religion is all about now let's get back to this so this is not the first dick that I have found attaching an ape because they're all over in fact in a modern day sense if you see my video that I have on Nicki Minaj and her Roman Reloaded photo shoot album when she's laying on the floor in a mess of paint 
In that video, the artist of the album cover, which is Deluxe Album Artist, creates in their paintings of, of with, um, with Nicki Minaj and her Roman Reloaded video, I mean, um, um, album cover, identical informations, ancient kept secret messages that identifies just with the same thing. In fact, I described Nicki Minaj's album cover in the exact way that I'm doing here. Because people, it details genetic change, genetic manipulation, and genetic contamination of mankind's being. So, people are saying that Nicki Minaj is, a, is attached to the cult, the Illuminati, this, that, and the third. Okay? I agree in a sense because the album, um, um, people that created her album cover artists are suggesting that Nicki Minaj, based on the album cover, is genetically contaminated. Now, Nicki Minaj herself is stating that she has Roman inside of her. The album cover is Roman Reloaded. I have connected Rome. This image here is from a Rome catacomb from the 4th century. A catacomb, people, is like a basement area, a cellarway. And where these ancient images are kept are preserved. So Rome, ancient Rome, is connected to everything that I am describing in so much as mankind being genetically contaminated, genetically altered, and the only being for all of this is that those that know the secret chemistry on how to genetically alter themselves and further themselves away from this creature to get to likenesses like this creature and other creatures of mankind and this explains how we were genetically changed how the process how the evolution of mankind and if you look closely you will see black faces white faces and I mean black faces merging to that of white faces because you cannot have this kind of artwork without it describing everything in detail on how this guy came to be. Every artist, I don't care whether it's Rembrandt, whether it's Michelangelo, whether it's Da Vinci, or whether it's a second century catacomb image or third century catacomb image, people, for God's sake, I done found images on mountainsides in the Grand Canyon in Bolivia all across the globe ancient areas where where the mountains were the message boards was the artist canvases prior to there being this type of stuff that I can read even the petroglyphs the petroglyphs all of that stuff glyphs they all describe the same identical thing how Mankind genetically evolved from his monkey creature or from his monkey being to other likenesses. It's my position that the records are very clear. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but I can tell you it's going to happen. Because what I have found is true and correct, and it describes everything. Your fear of this that's been instilled in you for so many, for, or it seems like forever, your fear of the unknown, of the demonic forces, of the divine forces, of all of these forces, your fear is what precluded you from seeing this. But I can go into these pictures dimensionally and extract I can take this face apart and show you and describe to you if through this fourth century catacomb image what they are trying to tell you where's that bearded man I'm telling you people 
that you need to see things for what they truly are and Google this image and stare at it and look at the highlights that I'm showing you and you will see faces. I see a black woman's face right here. In the same scenario of these other faces that I showed you. It shows you reptilian faces, it shows you black faces, and then it goes into a green face. I'm telling you people, if you were to look right here, you will see the faces coming to you. Because you know why? I can almost draw her face out for you. A complete woman's face here. Yeah, people, I'm telling you right now that you have been bamboozled and the way that you were controlled was through your fear of not knowing what is actually there. But I'm going to tell you something. This is the most compelling of all. No one will be able to explain away how a pope the bishop and cardinals are in a, is in a mass or behind a mass a sculpting that shows all of these multi-dimensional images there's no way and in fact there's a gargoyle right there with his feet look at this fat guy here another DNA a, DNA, a mutation shown on how there was a genetic change and altering from what people the snake is a representation of the reptilian and the ape are the first known origins of that of mankind well, let me get that ape back up here for you people can I get that? Well, how come I can't get that eight? I'm going to get that a perfect picture. I'm going to turn it. There you go. Right there. You see the, the nostrils there, people? The left nostril, the right nostril, the left eye, the right eye, the penis is on the head, the ape features right there, and then it's got a chain in its mouth, a genetic linking chain. And it's all linked to what you're worshiping. My name is Jerome Wright. I wonder if I can draw that African woman. I'm seeing a African woman here, people, from this side that is unique because it's in five different other faces here. But I can see her face and I can almost describe it to you in a way that you can possibly never even imagine. Because I can see her chin here, her lips here, her nose there, her cheekbones coming off here to the side. That's her left cheekbone. Here's her right cheekbone. This here would be her eye area shadowed away, eye shadowed away. The eyebrow area up over top of here, her forehead here. And this is almost like, believe it or not, like her Jesus' mustache creates her, her, um, like a puffiness in an afro her hair and then his top lip people creates the band that separates her hair or cover her hair off her forehead like a band his top lip is like the band that creates her and this is her face an African woman's face right here and his beard I mean his beard and coming down off the edge creates a puffiness of an afro for her right there that's her hair which is his mustache, her forehead, a band separating, his top lip separates her, her hair, this is where her hair is again, right in there, then it comes back to her forehead, right here, her left eye area, socket eye area, there's no eye there, and matter of fact, you know what she looks like, I can tell you exactly, and I don't have the picture here, damn it, but anyway, I can come back to that, yeah, I can come back to that because I know exactly what that creates. Yeah, I know exactly what I know her face now because I have it linked to something else from my Grand Canyon and Steppers. 
But look at this, people. Google this image. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. And I have went all over the place with this. But for the most part, it's my position that even though I haven't went and checked it out yet or I did anything, it's my position that this, me drawing to this in a way and, and attaching it to this image and seeing a woman, a damsel in here that looks like, not the one I just described to you, but there's another woman. When you go Google, I mean, go in and out on this, you will see the woman that bears a likeness to this woman, except for this one is like green in color. You'll see a woman that bears a likeness of, of her, okay, as you go in and out. And I could take and I can draw all of these. I'm almost becoming an artist drawing any people. I can actually draw it out for you if I took the time. But for the sake of this video, I did not. You know what I mean? But there are so many images in here, people, that I can extract from this that it would blow your mind. I can, I mean, it would blow your mind. From just this here alone, people, I can probably create, probably, I'm, I'm just, I lost count about maybe 25, 26 that are just right here. I like to stretch it and say 30 multi-dimensional images right here that shows you from the fish on how these evolution of, of, of genetics and faces emerge. It's like them paying homage to all of the faces because they have to describe how this likeness came. And this is what all of this stuff is about, people. And this is a catacomb image. But it's my position to come back to this. That where I was never interested in an opera before. Just like I wasn't even interested in, in, um, in, um, in any pretty much anything. Science, religion, all of that stuff. That now, I could probably go to an opera, I can probably go to the very first. Throughout its 25 year history to, to the per and to current and probably graphically detail scene for scene everything that they are trying to tell you. Because the playwright would be based on not a love story not a love story, but the story of evolution and of genetics and about the journey of genes, genetics in motion. You see people, even the story of the Bible, even the myth mythical stories, ancient mythical stories, all of that. The story about Davy and Goliath, those stories, you know what they are about? They're about stories of, gen of genetic warfare, battles, fights that occurred with genetics. One last story before I go to give you insight about all of this. You know, they say that Jesus destroyed or uh, uh, destroyed um, nations without even lifting a sword. You heard that story before, right? Well, you would think that he had the help of God and God came down and destroyed the nations, parted the waters, sent fireballs, this, that, and the third. Which doesn't sit with me, well with me either, because why would a person have to go through that? Why would you even have to have all of that? I mean, if you're a God and you're a divine being, you shouldn't have to go through all of that in the first place. That's what I would like to think. But anyway, that's just my rationale. It's my position that Jesus, and if you see all of the, 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 the stories or the pictures, the images of him rising from his tomb, you will see soldiers, six to seven soldiers, which represent different nations that was guarding his tomb and laying there dormant sleep. It's my position that that's a representation. That message behind that is that, yeah, Jesus destroyed those nations. You know how he did it? In his journeys to these different locations, 
the heads of these states higher positions, kingships, queenships, Jesus genetically contaminated them. Almost in a way that a person that has AIDS, knowing he has AIDS and takes it and spreads it. This is why he roamed the the um, the areas with um with with whores. What better way to spread contamination and viral infections or genetic contaminations except through through the men and women that engaged in unprohibited sex. This is the way these contaminations took place, people. And this is what the story of Jesus is circumventing around. Now, let's go to the Roman days, Caesar and all of them. Look at the Bible, people. Look at these pictures. Look at all of the nudity. Wild orgy parties and all of this, that, the third, the sexual, and all of this. These people knew that you could be genetically altered back then through sexual experiences with others that carry a gene that could be spread into your body. Genetic contamination and manipulation that utilize blood and semen to genetically alter people. And it began with the continent of Africa. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. It's my position that this man does not represent what you think he represents. And whether you like it or not, I will continue to show you images dating back way beyond anything you could possibly know. Because once you start understanding this and come forward, you will start to understand the less revealing images. These here are a raw form. But you look closely in there. It's almost like going there, one of those things, see if you can find one of those puzzles, those cryptic puzzles that you go in and see if you can identify images and they have it off to the side. See if you can identify, see if you can find that in there. Well, this is the same exact thing. But you couldn't do it before because you could not identify the creatures. You didn't know that we how we evolved. So the story of this man, you would have no idea. And and and, and people, they're not supposed to know this back then. You should be angry just for the simple fact that this is a fourth century artist in the catacomb in Rome. You should be angry that I can go in here and pull it, extract out apes with dicks on their heads, old women, and other multi-dimensional images in these pics. You should be upset, be mad, and that I can do this. Because you know why? Look at all of the suffering of cancers, of every other kind of disease in our world that had the true scientist that was, damn, I see, how come I don't see that? The true scientists of our world that dedicated their lives to trying to solve these, these problems of our world. Let's see something here, let me see if I can, I'm gonna leave that alone right now, but anyway, the true scientists of our world that tried to solve cancer and all these problems, what they could have possibly taken and done with this information? Had this information been shared with them? The very people that you come to believe in and worship has this hidden knowledge of who we are genetically, but yet chose it for their own bent, sick, and twisted ideas to change humanity in a way, in a way, and in a likeness that they saw fit, while in doing so, contaminating what is in the wake of what they and of their experience contaminated leaving a contaminated 
wasteland behind them. Look at Africa. Look at Haiti. Look at these places coming off these continents. Sickness is emerging. And you can possibly expect this on a continuation basis because these changes don't happen immediately. They happen over the process of hundreds and hundreds of years. Why do you think they're telling you this man is going to return? The coming of Jesus. He's not going to fall in from the sky. You know where he's going to fall in from? Out of your, your body. I almost going to say your fucking body. Out of your body. You know why? Because genetic contamination. Every four or five hundred plus years, these genetics can be reintroduced and reintermerged. I mean, re reintervened. And you have people that are boastfully showing this in their artworks. Music videos. I'm seeing this stuff in music videos. I'm seeing this stuff in commercials for cars. I'm seeing this stuff in, in all commercialized television, pretty much. I'm seeing it on boxes of cereals for kids. I'm seeing it in Disney. My name is Jerome Mike. This is my Jeronification channel. And on that note, I'm out.